Welcome to the Academy Unscripted. I'm Jennifer Sanchi, Senior Director of Exhibits and Public Spaces, and I'm with my colleague, Dr. Mark Sabay, the Interim Curator of Fishes. I need you to tell me what you do at the Academy. What is the, cur what is the Curator of Fishes? Basically, we have a, a collection of uh, 1.5 million dead fish in, uh, in jars of alcohol, and I manage them. Uh, you might be surprised to know that dead fish lead a, need a lot of management, and that's because uh, they get used. They get used by scientists from around the world. Can you describe, I mean, is this like a big library space? It's kind of like a library. It's just shelves and shelves and shelves of these jars of dead fish. I walked into Mark's lab once, and he's got like a Ziploc bag and like a sealer thing. And I was like, what? And, and specimens out. And I said, Mark, what are you doing? We ship specimens all over the world. And when you're shipping something like a book or something like that, you can just put it in a box and mail it off. But these fish, because they're stored in alcohol, we need to keep them moist. And then we, we mail them off with the uh, whatever documents are required by the, the country that's receiving them, that these are dead preserved fishes um, being in shipped for non-commercial reasons. In the mail, just in, in the, the mail. mail. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. You know, here you are going through your. Oh, oh, it's my fish has arrived. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, I know that you get to do a lot of field work, right? You get to go to very cool, exotic places. And what do you tell me more about that? And I've been fortunate to um, basically travel the world to to study fishes in in rivers and in streams and lakes uh, throughout the world. Some of my Favorite places to go are in, are in South America. That's, that's where, uh, in the Amazon basin, is where we have the highest diversity of freshwater fishes. Currently, what are you working on right now? Basically, for, for most of my career, I've studied this one group of fishes. They're called Doratid catfishes. They're native to freshwaters of South America. They have hard, bony heads. They have a row of scoots along the side with, with little thorns on them. So we call them thorny catfishes. And so I've spent pretty much my whole career studying this one family of fishes, uh, trying to classify them, basically trying to understand how many species there are and how those species are related and how to put them in the higher classification of life. But why? Sometimes it's just best not to ask why, because um, <laughs> it's, it's, let me put it to you this way. And over time, you become, you become an expert on, you know, one little corner of, uh, of biodiversity. And then you, once you become that expert, then what you want to do is, is communicate that knowledge to a broader audience. You mentioned the word biodiversity. Um, and that's a word that a lot of people who are concerned about, you know, our world and who are interested in science are kind of talking about. Can you tell me... Uh, regarding your work, um, how, does, how, how does the word biodiversity fit in with your work? Biodiversity, high biodiversity is kind of synonymous with, with a healthy planet. So uh, we see places on earth that, that have a high biodiversity. That means there's just, there's a lot of life going on and we should maintain it or we should, we should not impact it in such a way that reduces that biodiversity. Biodiversity is complexity. So uh, sometimes people are afraid of complexity and uh, they might think, well, how do I simplify this? How do I simplify this to make it maybe manageable or to understand it? And I would say, no, let's keep it complex. Uh, more complex systems are more robust to uh, profound changes. Any like surprises? in the work that you've done? Has anything really surprised you? My daughter and I went to the, uh, the mouth of Wissahickon Creek. And the mouth of this creek is, um, it doesn't look like much. I mean, a bunch of rocks, some flowing water. But my daughter and I went in there and, and we sampled around, we kicked around with our nets, and we found an amazing diversity of fishes for this little part of the creek. Uh, we caught American eels, we caught a, a darter called the, the shield darter, Persina peltata, which, and neither species had ever been recorded from this creek before. Uh, I think in total we got 14 species of freshwater fishes in just this 100 meter stretch. And I thought to myself, wow, that's, 
fantastic. I mean, um, it's wonderful to see that a, that a stream that runs through a city and has run through a, an urban area for so long can still support uh, a, a diverse uh, assemblage of fishes. I know that um, you love to share fishes that are spectacular that come to the museum. So can you tell me about the thing that you stuck on your face that day? <laughs> what is that thing? I'm originally from Chicago and whenever I go back to visit my family I, I go to the Field Museum and one of my Friends there was like, uh, hey, I scored a, a source of um, lampreys. Lampreys are, are among the most primitive fishes. They, uh, they don't have jaws. Instead of jaws, they have a, a sectorial disc. Now these lampreys are native to all parts of the North, Northern Hemisphere, but in the Great Lakes, they're invasive and they're a nuisance uh, because they prey on fishes that, that they didn't evolve with and these fishes have no defense defense against them. So uh, the U.S. Geological Survey traps lampreys every year to keep the population in check. And so this person that, that I talked with had just hundreds of lampreys that they had trapped and preserved. And so I said, well, send me, you know, send me a couple coolers full. Uh, and I opened up and they were, they were, they looked as fresh as uh, the day they were caught. So we went, we took them out on the floor. And <laughs> That suctorial mouth was still functional, basically. Then inside that mouth, they have these um, concentric rings of keratinous teeth, uh, teeth made of keratin. And in life, they would attach to the fish and then use those teeth to rasp uh, um, the skin to get blood and fluids going uh, exuded from the fish. Just putting one of those wet lamprey heads on your on your uh, on your hand. And then pressing down to get rid of the to get rid of the air, uh, they they were still suctorial. Okay, all right, you ready? This is it's time for the flash round. Flash round, ready? Yeah. Flash round, everybody. Uh, all right, are you or... crack them. Are you ready to go? Okay. I need to know what is your favorite word? Uh, taxonomy. What's your least favorite word? Fake. What inspires you? Creatively or emotionally? Oh uh, gosh, it, it would it be too corny to say my daughter? No, that's awesome. I love that. What turns you off? Roadkill? I don't know. Really? <laughs> Does it though? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. I work with aquatic. I work with fish, so we don't. See, there's not very fish clean. roadkill. Very uh, clean. But mammals in that roadkill. Yeah. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Police detective. Really? Huh. Yeah, problem solving. I mean, that would probably make a good show, like a good investigation. Okay, all right, fair. What would you not want to do? Accountant. Not that I don't value accountants, I'm just I'm don't want to be one numbers. if you grow up. Okay, this is a, this is my favorite question. I take this very seriously. If you could be another animal or plant for a whole day, what would you choose? Probably, I, I probably a bird of some sort, some kind of eagle, falcon, so flying. flying around there. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, I like that. Cool. What's your motto? Work hard, nap when you can. What is the most wondrous thing in the natural world to you? Gosh, would it be corny to say my daughter again? No. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> it's gorgeous. It's really nice. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mark Sabe. Uh, it was lovely talking to you. Um, nice and talking to you too, Jen. You're welcome. And thank you, everybody, for joining us for Academy Unscripted.